Good morning. Okay, so I worked the last couple of days, but I'm still congested and energy, Oof, loss of energy, everything. But uh, I'm taking today off. And I'll get through this reading because I love sharing with you guys um, the transcendent riches of grace. This is this last part. It's beautiful. Only by faith are we blessed today. We are resting on the promises of persecution for those wanting to live devoutly in Christ Jesus. 2 Timothy 3.12 So, these are promises of God that we would be persecuted for the sake of Christ. Our blessing is not among only among the celestials, but in the oncoming eons. Then we will no longer be weak and weary mortals, but grand and glorious immortals, the special objects of God's kindness, whose former impotence and sinfulness are a perfect foil for the transcendent riches of God's grace. This is not ours because of aught in us, but because of the glory which it brings to God in the eyes of the celestial hosts. Today, we are self-centered. Our hearts are engaged with our rights or our wrongs, our fame or our shame, our pleasure or our pain, due to our mortal frames. Dying to die. At the dais, we will put on immortality. We will not be able to die and be rid of our selfishness. For pain will be past, shame will be absent, and grace will replace right. There will be no need to concern ourselves with ourselves, so that our hearts may be God-centered, totally absorbed with his grace and his glory, and fully engaged, not only in worshiping him, but in his great plan of bringing every need to bow in adoration. This will be revealed to the celestial realms, not merely by words which we speak, but by which we were and what we have become. Utterly unworthy of our high station in ourselves, we will be the prize exhibition of God's grace, the revelation of the power of his love. This will be our felicitous function in the oncoming eons. During the last two eons, the millennium and the new heavens and the new earth, which will follow it, God will display his transcendent grace through us. This should humble us in the dust, for grace demands not our works or our worth, but our utter degradation. If we had any glory of our own, that would destroy this display. If we think we are at all worthy, that would only increase the grace, for it would show how ignorant and conceited we are. Yet it is not this grace only or yet is not this grace already on display. Think about that. By no means. Get it? This grace is not yet on display in that respect. It will be in the future. The oncoming eons, the transcendent riches of God's grace, will be displayed through the ecclesia, which is his body, Christ, our Lord, our head. His body, the ecclesia, displayed to the universe. The grace of God, and it's the transcendent grace of God that will be, will be displayed. This is very, there is very uh, little outwardly visible of what God has done for us right now. Inwardly, our spirits may be exulting in the glory of his grace, exactly. But this is not apparent to the celestial host yet. Indeed, it is necessary now that they become acquainted with our mean estate, that they realize the depth of our degradation, so that the contrast will be apparent when we are glorified. This is why the flesh is still in us, why we, utter, why we fail so utterly in our walk, why the saints are often more unjust and ungracious than sinners. Wow. This does not excuse them by any means, but it is a relief to realize that God will use even this for his own glory in the eons to come. Grace is much easier to grasp 
when we see it as an ingredient of God's glory. In our pride and self-righteousness, we would like to earn the prize, which will be ours in the future. We would like to pay the price for our portion. This would contribute very little, if anything, to display the, the, to the display of God's heart to the celestial hosts. To them, there would be nothing especially attractive in such, in, in such justice. Their hearts could not be reached by righteousness, even though this is essential in God's government. It is only when God justly dispenses transcendent grace through Christ that the heart of these superior creatures will be stirred, and they will also fall down and bow the knee in fervent adoration. To be the means of this will be our highest happiness. God will use us. God will use us among the celestials in the oncoming eon to display his transcendent grace. It's amazing stuff. In my school days, it seemed to be very odd to me, very odd that the end of the school course should be called a commencement. But it, but it now appears to me as a very good designation for the beginning of our career after the time of tutelage is past, and we are in that time of tutelage now, being in this mortal state. So it will seem to us in the coming glory, when we look back at the dais, it, is no, it no longer will appear to us as the end of our mortal existence merely, but as the commencement of our real life, the beginning of the career for which we were created and called justified and reconciled, vivified and glorified. It will encourage our hearts in the midst of our present sufferings and persecutions to anticipate that future bliss and compare it with our present state. Let us keep God's goal, God's grand goal ever in view, not only now in the midst of our suffering and humiliation, but in our thoughts of the future. It will transform the dais from a judgment seat concerned mostly with the punishment of our sins, which is crap, to the grand celestial inaugural of the eons of the eons, in which God commences to take a public part in the affairs of his creation through his Christ and his saints, in transforming the creatures of his hands into the comrades of his heart. The dais will prepare us to have a part in this greatest and grandest achievement of e the Eonian times. So there you have it. Our future is bright. Very, very bright. Grace and peace.